Hi friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Brill and I are here today to talk about some of our favorite quarantine reads. This pandemic has been really hard, right? Everyone is anxious, really worried. We can't do some of the things that we really like to do, and we may feel cut off from a lot of the people that we love. It's a hard time. But I believe that books and stories can really help with this. Rivka Galchin said recently in the New York Times that stories are life-saving. Reading stories in difficult times is a way to understand those times, and it's also a way to persevere through them. I have always believed this about books, and it's especially true, I think, during these most troubling times. So I'd like to talk to you about a couple books that I've read during this quarantine period that I think are just amazing, and I hope you might like them too. The first book is called The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. And not only is this one of the best books I've read during quarantine, I actually think it's one of the best young adult books that I've read all year so far. It's just amazing. I actually read a copy at the library and I loved it so much I had to order a copy of my own because it's fantastic. So basically this story is about siblings, Violet and Sam. Sam struggles with a lot of issues with depression, suicidal thoughts, and his sister Violet has a lot of anxiety issues. One summer during a lot of family problems, Violet actually goes to stay in a small seaside town in Maine with her uncle. And the family is actually a little bit famous in this town because their ancestor is the sole survivor of a shipwreck that happened off the coast many, many years ago. So Violet now has time to think and feel all these things that she's been going through and experiencing with her brother Sam. She starts working in a museum, a coastal museum. She starts making different friends. She really comes into her own. This book is a little tough. It has a lot of deep issues that it deals with. It addresses sexuality, anxiety, eating disorders, suicidal tendencies, but it does it in a way that just makes you filled, feel so filled with hope. It makes you realize that people can overcome anything, anything. It's also about love. It's also about the bond between siblings. It's about shipwrecks. It's about solving mysteries. This book really has it all. It's a little heavy, but it's also really beautiful and has really fun moments in it too. So again, this book is called The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. And the writing in it is just gorgeous as well. The second book I'd like to talk to you about is called The Midnight Lie. And this is by Marie Rutkowski. Have you ever started reading a book, got into like the first couple paragraphs or the first few chapters, and you are just blown away with the sensation of, wow, I am absolutely going to love this book. This book is going to be fantastic. Well, that is how I felt as soon as I started reading this one. It's amazing. So it is about this main character whose name is Niram, and she's what's called a half kith. They live in this, in this world and in this city where the half kith are walled off from the high kith, which are like the nobility. The half kith barely survive. They're poor. They're run down. They're abused by the nobility. And nobody really seems to know or understand why. It's just the way it always has been. But Niram starts to discover some secrets. And with these secrets she finds that she may be able to turn this system around on its head. Let me actually read you the first couple paragraphs of this book and you will see why I got hooked right away. There were warning signs in the ward that day that anyone could have seen. The festival meant the militia would be out in force, seeking to fill their quotas for arrests they would find infractions enough in the ward, whether from drinking or improper dress or any of the many offenses you can commit when you're half-kith. 
Maybe I should have been more careful from the moment I saw the bird from my little window in my little room in the tavern attic. So cold that I had been going to bed fully dressed. Athene, a pretty name for a city, and this city was pretty for the right sort of people, is usually warm. So warm that the tiny purple indie flowers grow out of the cracks of crumbling walls. Thin green fingers dig deep into stone. A heavy scent thickens the hot air. But every now and then, a wind blows from the west that freezes everyone's bones, half kith and high kith alike. People say teardrops of hail spangle the pink sand beaches outside the city. They say the trees beyond the wall become jeweled by clear pearls of ice and that the high kith drink bitter hot chocolate at outdoor parties where their laughter is white lace in the chilled air. I had never seen the shore. I didn't know if chocolate was something I would like. I had never even seen a tree. I woke because of the way the birds sang. The song was sparkling, a string of glass beads flung upon a polished floor. Maybe I should have guessed then how my day would end. But how could I? I could not have known, because I thought I knew myself. I thought I knew the things I could do and what I would not. Here is what I believed. I would do what was expected of me. I could trust myself. Anyone I missed would not come back. I would die if my crimes were discovered. So you tell me what would make a good, quiet girl get herself in trouble, especially when she had so much to lose. Tell me. Wow. How can you hear that and not just want to read the rest of it? When I first read that, I wanted to learn everything about this world and these characters. I didn't know anything that was going on, but all I did know was that I had to read more. So I hope that that book sounds as exciting to you as it did to me when I first read it. Again, it's called The Midnight Lie, and that's by Marie Rutkowski. Both of those books are available at the Farmington Community Library. If they sounded interesting to you, if you seem like something you would like, feel free to put them on hold. Our curbside service is available now for pickup. Um, when they call and contact you, you just come and pick up and follow the instructions. So I hope everyone has a really great week. Bye-bye.